So Elon uh, talks about, he's been talking about for about a year about a civil war in Europe, right? He's been talking about civil war. Now in America, you know, uh, leave the world behind. Obama's movie came out a year ago. And then the recent movie came out, the civil war. I don't know if you saw that or not with the journalists, Reuters. You're not missing much. It was a terrible movie. But leave the world behind, I think you should watch. How much do you, as somebody who, you're very well read, you were somebody that people ask you for your level of expertise. You know, I had you on and we had a great conversation together. You see the fourth turning, the book, you know, uh, written by uh, Neil Howe, and I think it's William Strauss. They wrote it December 29th or something of 1997. The fourth turning, what's gonna happen, and there's gonna be a civil war in the US. Where are you at with, say this thing goes November 5th, Trump's doing everything right, and we go to sleep. And then they say, yeah, we're going to have to stop tonight at 2 o'clock in the morning, and we're going to start to count tomorrow. And then you see the same hockey stick, top of the situation, and the same thing that happened in 2020 happens again. Do you think there is a possibility that a civil war could break out in America? And if yes, what does it look like? I mean, of course, that possibility exists. Um, But probably more today than ever before. I'm talking like, you know, with the current conditions we got. I agree, and I also think civil war doesn't quite capture the problem because our last civil war, there was a geographic description. There's no geographic resolution here. So what we have are two factions that can't stand each other and don't trust each other. And this is why I say that we have to win with a sufficient margin to beat the capacity uh, to play games so that those games become inconceivable. And, you know, that's a tall order and we don't have long. Right? Yeah. We're 70 some days from the election. Um, and in fact, early voting m- means that even that calculation isn't what it once was. Um, but no, we. Th- this is a frightening moment. And what I'm concerned about is that this isn't just any country. If the republic fails, it's going to take the West out with it. And in my opinion, I'm speaking now as an evolutionary biologist, I believe the world is depending on the West to point the way. And that if the West fails, we are in for uh, an unenviable future as a planet. Uh, Brett, you have an event coming up. Right, and the event's going to be what, September? September 29th. September 29th. On the Capitol Mall between the Washington Monument and the World War II Memorial. The event is called Rescue the Republic, Mm -hmm. Join the Resistance. And this really is the moment where something new starts, that coalition between people like Donald Trump, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., that coalition comes together and announces its intention to retake the republic and to restore it to the path that our founders set us on. Now, we have some excellent people coming to this event. Uh, Among them, we have Tulsi Gabbard, we have Russell Brand, we have Robert Malone, Bobby Kennedy will be speaking. There. Bobby Kennedy is going to be there. Bobby Kennedy says he's going to be there. Now, I will, I will put one little asterisk on that, which is that when Bobby Kennedy shows up somewhere, there are security concerns, of course, that make it so certain boxes have to be checked. Sure, so sure. Bobby Kennedy says he intends to be there. Whether th- his security people will sign off, there's Different some story. There's something. And I will say he's not the only person who uh, has security concerns at that scale who is intending to come as far as we know. So there's there's lots of folks who you can't see on the website yet, but if you go to the website, which is jointheresistance.org, you can see the list of people who we have uh, already in ink, and it's an impressive list, and it's only going to get better. Matt Taibbi, Robert Malone, you know, uh, some, some Douglas Murray, who is a list of very interesting, but I'm, I'm looking at this. Douglas and- Murray, I don't think, is on the list. Okay. Um, okay. But... But I'm, but I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at the list of uh, uh, planning on to really uh, uh, opposite. So here's our non-negotiable principles are simple. One, 
war must always be the last resort. With the emphasis on last. Last. I see that. With the emphasis on last. Yes. yes. Two, restore informed consent. Three, end propaganda. And coercion. Propaganda, surveillance, and information control. That's right. Four, end lawfare and abuse of the abuse of the courts. Five, secure monetary freedom. Six, restore family sovereignty. Seven, enact a rational border policy. Eight, a return to truth seeking and open dialogue. Okay, now when you're talking war, let's talk about war for a second. That you guys want to end war or last resort. Key word is last. Right. We're not resort. We're, this is not a movement that is going to embrace pacifism, but right. we have to exhaust all the op- other options before we go to war. Okay, so Ukraine, Russia, you got Israel, Hamas, you got possibility of China, you know, nothing's happened yet, but you never know what they're going to be doing, right? And you got Iran now getting involved. And I'm not just talking Hezbollah, Houthis, or I'm talking Iran, Iran, uh, possibility with uh, Israel. And some people are saying, oh, we should go out there and, you know, take out Iran. And, we, we, you know, some people that just want to go to war with Iran. And by the way, there's also a movement of people that are very much a anti-Israel movement that's going on the last few months with APAC and Israel runs the world and they own media and they own this and they own that and look, arguments from all sides, right? Tensions are very, very high right now. With this Rescue the Republic event, what's your position and the way to go about eliminating and stopping some of these wars? How do you go about doing that when the emotions are so high? Well, I mean, we have a powder keg globally speaking, and we could easily end up in a world war. And we are being pushed in that direction for reasons that I think none of us in the public know. So the None fir- of us know. I think. I don't really understand the war in Ukraine. Let me say that. We, are, we seem to be acting in a belligerent way to our Cold War nuclear-tipped enemy. And it does not appear to be what rational adults would be doing in the situation if they wanted to avoid a hot war and worse possibly a nuclear exchange. So why is that? I don't know. But I do know that concerns about corruption in Ukraine and its connection to the Biden administration were very much on my mind before Biden was even elected. Right? I don't think it's an accident that Hunter Biden has business entanglements in Ukraine and we are now f- fighting a proxy war in Ukraine with increasing uh, belligerence, where we've actually authorized the Ukrainians to use American weapons inside of Russia. What kind of madness is this? It's, it's perfectly insane. So, you know, as with the border, the job one is to stop putting ourselves in positions like this. Job two is to figure out what can be done to de-escalate these situations that we have um, because, frankly, everyone on Earth is depending on us doing that. We cannot, with the level of weaponry that we have on Earth, be constantly fighting in chaotic wars that can go anywhere. Yeah, for me, the, the, the tensions we're seeing with America right now, with everything that's going on, it's extremely disturbing where... Emotion. All sides think they're right. Everybody thinks they're 100% right and everybody else is wrong. And the, the score of us being reasonable and willing to sit down and have a conversation is the lowest ever. And maybe not the lowest ever, the lowest in a long time. And whenever we can't reason, chaos happens. You know, and you can't blame a lot of people that are frustrated and upset, wondering who the hell is continuously wanting these wars to happen. Of course, you can look at one military industrial complex, the business model of it, of how much money you can make. But who else can you point at that would benefit from having continuous wars? Well, there's always some party that benefits from conflict. And the point is they, those people must never be in control. This is why we phrase it this way. War must always be the last result because resort because there are always people who will want a given war because they happen to be in a position to benefit. So We have to collectively agree, I'm sorry, that's not the way we're going to govern this planet. We are going to attempt to prevent war wherever that is possible. Um, But I would also point out, you're saying this thing, we we can't talk to each other. Everybody's 100% convinced of their position. I've been talking for many months about something I call the Cartesian crisis. And the Cartesian crisis is named after Rene Descartes, who faced uh, a 
kind of uh, a, let's call it a mental breakdown or nearly that, nearly that, based on the fact that he realized that almost everything that he thought was a fact was something that he had taken on somebody else's authority and that that was a very perilous place to be. And um, mm. we are in a position where our informational environment is so heavily dependent on um, chains of evidence that we cannot check and know nothing about. You know, we look at something like the replication crisis inside of um, the discipline of psychology and we discover that a, a huge fraction of what we thought were facts that had been discovered uh, in psychology labs weren't even reproducible. Mm. So nobody has a high quality, uh, nobody has high quality access to information, which means that we all ought to be skeptical of what we ourselves believe, not just what others believe. And this movement that is going to hopefully um, galvanize beginning September 29th on the Capitol Mall, Rescue the Republic, that movement is built around us putting our differences aside and hearing what we have to say, excluding those who are not really interested in the well-being of the nation going forward, who are not interested in the nation being stabilized so we can save the, the West. Um, and once we exclude those people who aren't interested in us doing that, we have to learn to hear each other because, frankly, all of us are suffering from the same low-quality information environment. Yeah, I just saw your tweet. The, Car the Cartesian crisis describes the inability to be sure of anything. Scientific claims, the basic facts of historical events, the degree to which a consensus is actually accepted by others, it leads to the collapse of reason. That's the key word, reason. We are no longer reasoning itself. But it's difficult to illustrate with examples because in each case, people immediately get lost in making the case for their best guess at what's true. Try spending one day resisting conclusions and concentrating on the quality and consistency of the evidence. Our average level of certainty may be unchanged, but our reason for certainty is at an all-time low. If you did this exercise once a month, you'd soon know how rapidly the Cartesian crisis is deepening. It's vital that we each halt our descent into the tsunami of uncertainty, establish an unbreakable bond with someone you have good reason to trust and discuss your beliefs and the reasons you hold them regularly and in person, you won't regret it. Uh, you, you ever read the book Power Versus Force? Nope. Uh, he, he breaks down the different levels of consciousness a society and a country and an individual can go through. If you go to the images, Rob, he talks about the lowest level being shame, guilt, apathy, you know, all these greed, you know, that's the one right there. There you go through apathy, grief, fear, desire, anger, pride, and then we enter the first level of consciousness, which is power, and that's courage. And then after courage is neutrality, willingness, acceptance, and then reason. When we're able to reason, it's the life view is meaningful, God view is wise, emotion is understanding, process is abstraction, and then above it is love, joy, peace, and enlightenment, which that takes a lot of work to get there, but I, I don't think we have enough of the ability to reason today. It's all emotions of, oh, you, know, so you don't know what you're talking They want to do this. They want to do that. Kill, kill them all. Take this out. It's a little bit too much of that. And that, that concerns me uh, a lot. So for those of you guys that are watching this, let me tell you, these USA hats, they're, um, they, they don't stay on the shelf. Every time we launch these, they go in a heartbeat. And by the way, if you're happy about Bobby Kennedy coming out and talking about the endorsement and the support and the corruption on the DNC side, and you love America, you love USA, you may not be somebody that wants to wear some other stuff, but you want to wear a hat that says USA and future looks bright, go to the QR code or go to vtmerch.com, order the USA gear and sport it, especially between now and November 5th. Uh, these are exciting times. Again, united, united, united. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.